Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm going to take an old, chewed up, worn out paddle and clean it up so that it's almost as good as new. So uh, a week ago I was back in the woods and I did a video, I think I called something like rescuing an old canoe or something like that, where I went back in the woods and dragged a canoe that had been sort of sitting in a swamp. And these two paddles were just floating around <laughs> periodically in water and had been in that canoe for about eight years. And they're in pretty rough shape. Now, this one, whoops, sorry, I hit that hammer there. This one's already been worked on. Okay, I scraped it. I reprofiled the edge. I actually had to cut almost about an inch and a half. What would that be? Like five centimeters, something like that, off the end because it had a crack going into it. Right, which, you know, if you've got a crack, it can just grow and grow and grow. So I cut the, cut the crack part of the wood off and just kept cutting back until I noticed that the grain seemed very sound. And then I reshaped the profile and got it nice and symmetrical and sanded the whole thing pretty good. And now it's ready to be uh, revarnished. All right. This one, and you can see, oh, geez, I keep hitting the camera, sorry. You can see how much I took off of that paddle. By the, Oh, sorry, by comparing these two, right? And that's what I removed. Okay. Also, this paddle had been really chewed up on the sides. So I planed the sides down again so they were nice and smooth. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is revamping, refixing, you know, sort of restoring this paddle um, real time to show that it, it's really not that hard. A job and I think I can do this in less than 15 min minutes. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty quick. I'm going to talk through the various stages of it. I'm going to show you everything I'm going to do. And the idea here is restoring the paddle not so it's like perfect and brand new. Because what's the point of that? I mean you're going to have this out in the woods, you're going to be beating it up. Right? So it's more like restoring it so that it can continue to function as it was intended and it continue to last for years and years and years. Right, and this is not about it looking new. I mean, if you want, if you're fixing a paddle so it looks new, that's that's a paddle that's going to go on the wall, right? Or be used once or twice a year. I'm talking about something you're going to use as a walking stick, pushing off rocks, driving into the mud, whatever, <laughs> fighting off bears. Okay, so let's get started. And the first step is to deal with this jaggedy edge here. Okay, now one thing you could do is with some sort of cutting tool, just cut. I mean, it looks like about half an inch has to come off the bottom of this paddle. Okay, so uh, one way I could do that is with a saw and just cut around, you know, a thin saw. But another way is to just, if you've got, I mean, another way you could do it if you had a really aggressive file, you could file it down. But another way is just to use it. I'm gonna try to keep this really simple with basic tools. And I'm gonna show multiple ways to do this so you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of tools. I mean, really, I think to do a decent job of this, all you need, all you really need is a knife. Um, but uh, let me show you what tools I've got here. Uh, this is a handy tool because this has got all this flaked varnish on it. Um, so I gotta get some of that. Everything that wants to come off, I'm gonna take off with this. You can use the back of your knife if you've got a nice 90 degree spot on your knife, but this is a lot faster. So you can use the back of the knife to scrape. That's fine. This is a lot faster. And these have multiple uses. They're, it's worth ha having a nice sharp paint scraper in your kit at home. Uh, a sanding sponge from a dollar store. This is an older one, so it's a bit finer than they come brand new. Got a sanding block fitted with 60 grit, a kind of aggressive uh, sandpaper. 80, 60, 50, that sort of thing. Something really aggressive. Okay. Uh, I got a hand plane or a block plane, whatever you want to call that, planer. You don't need this, but it makes everything a lot easier. It's a great tool. To, if you're going to buy one plane type tool, you can do a lot with one of these if you're into woodworking. Uh, and they're relative, you know, this this size, they're relatively inexpensive and fairly versatile. Um, and of course, I got a decent bush bushcraft knife. I got one of these four in one rasps, you know, different. It's, it's like a file, but it's for filing wood, you know, so it's got some, it's got a rounded side. And an aggressive side. This is like one of the most useful tools you'll ever own. You can get one of these for like, you can get really cheap ones, but this one I think was made in Japan. Um, get one of these for like a good one for 20 bucks. It'll last your entire life if you only use it on wood. Take care of it, right? Don't be filing nails and stuff, right? Um, and I got some uh, exterior indoor outdoor uh, urethane. I'll talk a little bit more about paint uh, when I'm doing that part of the job. 
and why I chose urethane as opposed to other things. But let's get started. Let me adjust the camera here and uh, show you what we're going to do. All right, so I'm trying to do this in frame, so you forgive me if I look a little bit awkward with the knife. I would not necessarily do everything the way I'm doing it right now if I wasn't filming. Okay, but I'm just kind of, you know, cutting, <laughs> cutting away from my body on a bit of an angle. I'm just going to cut and try to remove everything I see that's problematic on this side. And just keep cutting back until I don't see <laughs> any, any new problems, right? Now again, this, this whole exercise is about getting this paddle somewhere where it's functional. I'm going to flip sides here, come at it from this side. Now there's better ways to hold the knife in your hand for more power, but those won't work for... <laughs> I, need a, I need a cameraman <laughs> to film that. So I'll just have to make do with the sort of less than ideal, less than ideal way of hanging on to everything. I mean, the ideal thing is to stick it in a vise. I'm kind of using my legs as a vise, <sighs> right? But we get by. I mean, what we're looking for is to cut away everything that looks like it's like I'm, I'm getting into a bit of rot here in the center, right? So I know I got the whole thing has to come back, probably to probably to something like that. I don't know if you can see that line I just made, right? At the very least, because this is a bit soft here. All right. So, you just work your way back, you know. Yeah, I can see that it's just it's breaking off, it's breaking off in chunks on this side of the paddle. So I gotta keep cutting back. I'm gonna do it from this side. I'm gonna keep cutting back until it stops doing that. Until I get to the good wood. As opposed to, like, see, I still got rot there. Okay. If I, no matter how far I go back, I keep getting into rot. So that tells me I probably want to take a decent amount off. And coming out, I and mean, I thought I could just shave a little bit off with a knife, but it's not. I keep getting into the soft stuff. So I'm going to go get a, a saw and cut that off. All right, so nothing fancy here. Just got an old silky saw and a cut. Little pieces are going to break off. Just break them off as they go so we can cope with the angles. That there needs to be just uh, popped off. There we go. It's exactly what I had to do with the other saw, or the other uh, paddle. Exactly the same thing. Again, I'm just breaking this off so so the saw will um, I can I can sort of so I can make a more rounded cut with the saw, right? That's all. I'm trying to keep things symmetrical, just by eye, which is not always a great plan for success. The eye never sees things symmetrical. All right, so now looking at the end grain, I can say with a reasonable amount of confidence that we're, we've got good wood. So we lost a little bit of paddle. We lost, oh, about an inch, but this paddle will work just fine without an inch, okay? And after we're done fixing this all up, it'll last for years and years and years, and we're not gonna let it sit in a swamp for eight years after this, all right? So, Treated probably this could should last the rest of my life. Okay, so the, now the next stage is to put the something resembling a reasonable edge. The best way to do this, I took a lot of care to get this one symmetrical just using another paddle. I mean, if you don't have another paddle, you have to go by eye or do some math or something, I guess. But you know, I can use this as a 
like a template, right? I just draw a little mark around with my knife. All right. All right. Now I know where to where to cut to, and I'm just I'm just beveling this off, right? So it's not at right angles. Just very carefully with the knife, taking care to follow the grain. All right. I'm just doing the rough work here. I'm going to get finer um, using file and the sandpaper and the plane and stuff like that okay but for this stage this is fine all right flip her over repeat the process on this side same same idea I got the two handles lined up Out there, it's about right. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're just making it close enough to perfect by eye, by feel, right? There we go. Getting it close. Close enough is good enough. You know, a lot of these uh, woodworking channels and stuff, people are just trying to make perfect things. And I mean, you can do that if 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 if, if that pleases you, <laughs> right? But um, you can do a lot more in a lot less time if you. You know, there's a great old quote. I don't know who said it. Probably someone like Thomas Jefferson or something about. You know, perfection is the enemy of the good. It might have been Winston Churchill. I don't know who said that. Probably really, probably older than those two people. It probably goes way back. Um, so, or perfectionism is the enemy of the good. Anyway, it's a good quote <laughs> because you know you don't have to get things perfect. You just have to get them functional, functional, serviceable, reliable, adequate. Especially for a bushcraft, in my opinion. All right, so I've got that as far as I want to take it with the knife. Now, I'll work on it with this. I mean, I could continue with the knife, okay? Absolutely. But if, if you've got one of these, this is a faster tool, okay? It just does everything faster. So there's no point. You know, if you were out in the middle of nowhere, I suppose, but you know, if I was in the middle of nowhere, I, this is something you might do around a campfire, I guess. But, uh, you know, probably not necessary. And, you know, this is more stuff you do in your in your backyard or maybe in camp um, to make your tools last. Again, if I look clumsy with the tool, it's just because of the <laughs> camera angle. <laughs> Can't state that enough because I feel really clumsy right now. <laughs> Be careful around corners. Don't push this way. It's better to sort of push away push in from a corner otherwise you you'll break stuff off right I notice the corners aren't equally as round I'll try to even that out a bit I think that side's good enough All right and so now I can switch sides this uh, rasp only really works on the push so hole doesn't really do much. I'm not spending a lot of energy here. I'm just taking off all the high points that were left behind by the knife, right? Because the knife doesn't make, you know, curved cuts. It makes angled cuts. Right? So I'm just curving everything off. Okay, I think that's enough rough for that. Now for the side of the blade, um, you can use your knife if you follow the grain carefully. I mean, when I say follow the grain carefully, if you're put, bringing your knife along the edge and it wants to cut into the wood, that means you gotta, you got to turn the thing around and go the other way. Right? Grain will either pull the knife blade into the wood, or it'll, you know, the grain's either going in or out. So if you're, if you're moving along and you feel like the knife's biting in, reverse the cut, right, so that it doesn't bite in. This edge is pretty good here. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. And it's a lot easier to do using a block plane. Just set really, really fine, not very aggressive at all. 
I can just feel the grains going the other way, so I'm going to go the other way with that. Yeah, by the way it's cutting. It's trying to dig in. And the reason I'm doing this is so that when this is all painted, when this is varnished, right, I'll have a nice smooth surface here and the paddle will be less likely to absorb water. That's all that's needed for that. Okay, now I'm going to do the other side. I'm pretty sure the grain's going to... Nope, same thing here. Okay. So I'll do the same thing here. So I just work it down. I think I'm on camera there, yeah. Work it down. Just so that it... When I put my hand along here, it felt very rough. And that's just from years of wear and tear and, of course, sitting in the ice. So, just a few passes with this block plane. Taking, taking care to sort of round it around. Right. And now it's smooth. Right now I take my aggressive block plane, sorry, sorry aggressive block sander, right, 60 grit, and just run that along there. Same thing for the other side. Like that. A little weird spot here I want to work on a little bit. I'm just going to run your hand along and feel. So it feels a little bit weird right here, so I want to work that a little bit. Same thing here. It feels a little bit weird around the corner, so I'm going to work that a little bit. That's better. Now I'll do the entire edge. Right, get a nice, uh, nice, Nice and smooth. I mean, as smooth as you can get something with 60 grit sandpaper, right? But the reason we use the aggressive grit is so that it doesn't take as long, right? We take off a lot more material with 60 grit as opposed to something something finer, right? Then we can work our way up to a finer sandpaper once we get it the way we want it. Weird spot here on the paddle. Just seeing that with my eyes. Checking that out a little bit. Again, we're not going for perfection, but you know, if you see a glaring dimple, oh look at that, we tore the sandpaper. And you don't need a block plane for this. That's not absolutely necessary. So <laughs> we tore this thing up a little bit. That's okay, it's fine. Okay, so now I've got that reasonably good okay the final stage will be will be to use a fine sandpaper we're not done yet now this surface here i got paint flaking off i don't know if you can see that but there's paint flaking off now you know a lot of these youtube channels they strip stuff right down so it's like it's brand new again but if you want to take the time to do that you can but I spent years as a painter, and uh, it's totally unnecessary. I mean, number one, this paddle earned that patina. Right? I don't want it to look new. <laughs> I want it to wear its wear. <laughs> I'm take that little sticker off. So, I mean, I'm just using this scraper to get off everything that's coming off relatively easily. And it does a really fast, good job. I could keep going and take this right down to the wood with the scraper if I really wanted to. You can see how I got nice, got all these shavings, right? So, I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I really don't see the point. It's not going to help anything. Right? When I varnish this, the stuff that's not coming off is just going to get sort of re-glued in. Remember, most paints have a kind of gluing effect. And, uh, And of course, everything that's bare will get recoated. You can see this is not taking long. And this is partly helped by the fact that the scraper I'm using is really sharp, right? Yeah, this is one of those jobs where if you're a perfectionist, it's hard to, to know when to stop. <laughs> 
and you're inclined to just keep going on forever, but you can get all the paint off if you really want to. But if you're just like get her done sort of guy, like me, I have perfectionist tendencies, I'll admit that. But uh, get that off. Now, that's pretty good. Now I can feel going up the handle of this. I don't know if you can see it, but there's all these little black dots. And that, as far as I know, is some sort of, you know, something that started growing on the saw, or gr sorry, growing on the paddle when it was just sitting in the wood, in the water. Like some sort of lichen or mushroom or I don't know what it is. But what I do know is that this sanding sponge is taking all that off and making it, I can just go by feel. It's all bumpy. It's all bumpy up here and it's all smooth down here. Right, so get that stuff off. Right, then you're gonna paint it and it's gonna last. And I mean, sure, it's, it's leaving some stains behind and uh, you know, we can use that. You say stained or we can say patina. <laughs> it's a question of, you know, <laughs> your personality. I tend to, I like thinking of it as patina because if it's a stain, I gotta remove it. If it's patina, I can enjoy it. <laughs> I recommend seeing it as patina, just like an old knife or an old axe, you know. They don't look shiny and new forever, and they don't look shiny and new for long if you actually use things. If you use something, it never looks new for long. Okay, so that's that's completely smooth. That's ready for painting. Also, just by scoring it with the sandpaper, right, it'll help when I actually varnish this, right, it'll help that varnish to stick properly so it won't flake off. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to the blade with my coarse sandpaper, even though it's torn up. I'm just going to give it a quick once over, take off anything that's going to come off. Quick once over. You don't have to be perfect, you have to be thorough. Is the, I guess the important thing is to get every surface, but perfection not necessary. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to go over that whole thing with the finer sandpaper. To see how quick this is all happening, right? Okay, now I'm just going to go back over the, the end here. So it looks fairly tight. You don't want to see it coarse at this end because it could suck water up, right? So you want to get it so that once it's uh, varnished, it's going to seal up really good. I think, I think that'll probably do her. I think that's good enough. A couple little, couple little spots here that... Again, you can, you can, you can, you can dither and mess with it all day. But what's the point of that, right? You get a life to live. That's good enough. Okay, this is all ready to go now. We're ready to varnish this. All right, so I got some exterior varnish. This is called Spar Urethane, clear semi-gloss. You can go with full, you know, high gloss or semi-gloss. Um, it says tough protection from sunlight, rain, moisture, temperature changes. All right, so it's an exterior urethane. This is the first coat. I'm gonna do two coats. You can do as many coats as you want, but you gotta have, I, I would recommend a minimum of two. And the first coat, what I recommend is actually cutting it with a bit of paint thinner. You don't need a lot, right? And this, this is not a huge area we're trying to cover. So I got a little bit of paint there, maybe like, I don't know, half an ounce in this old margarine container. And I got some turpentine here. You could use just varnish, or sorry, Varsol or mineral spirits. But anyway, I'm going to put like maybe tablespoon in there okay that's all what that'll do is it'll help the paint I'm basically thinning the paint right making it thinner and it'll help it penetrate the wood get in there all right so my first coat I want it to get because the second coat isn't going to penetrate as much as the first coat the first coat will be in the way right? <laughs> so by thinning the thinning the paint with some sort of thinner that Know, that will act as a solvent for that paint for urethane turpentine's fine I'm just making the paint a bit runnier so it'll go 
deeper into the wood. And I'm just going to do the blade here on camera. I got to do the rest somewhere where I can where I can actually um, set set the camera. All right. So I got that all mixed in properly. Now some people might ask, why aren't you using boiled linseed oil or something like that? You know, and if I, I've had a paddle that I've made from scratch that had never been varnished, right? I mean, these are just, I don't know, these came with the canoe, I guess. I mean, they don't even, I didn't even buy these. Um, these are my, you know, the guy who had, had the canoe initially. Um, but this canoe was varnished, and I'm going to assume it was varnished with something like what I've got here, right? So, um, the uh, uh, linseed oil is not going to penetrate the parts that are already been treated, right? Linseed oil is for bare wood, in my opinion anyway. It's going to do its best job with bare wood. Something like this, you're kind of stuck with using a varnish. So, I mean, I'll let this dry. It's a nice sunny day today, so it's a good and warm. So, you know, we're getting into the end of fall, so we're running out of those nice days, right? But it's a nice sunny day and I can let this dry. Once it's dry, I'll sand it. And get, I'll give it a very light sanding and give it another coat, okay? Well, that's as far as I can go with this one. I gotta set it down in a special way so that it's not, you know, touching the ground. Always good after you've done some painting to just go over the whole thing lengthwise with a dry brush to pick up any drips. This is not something you would want to use spray paint for. You want to use a brush to get the paint into the wood, right? Really get it in there, get good contact, right? It's also cheaper, <laughs> right? I got enough, <laughs> this little tiny can, <laughs> got enough paint here to do a thousand paddles probably, right? Um, anyway, that's as much as I can do while still being able to hang on to this paddle. All right, so I've got the first coat on these now and they're drying in the driveway with a good breeze, a little bit of light. And uh, the fact that I thinned it with that turpentine, I mean, you, again, you can use Varsol or whatever to thin it. I just, that's what I had, turpentine. Um, also, turpentine sort of like natural, so I like that going into the wood. But that'll accelerate the drying time because it's volatile, right? So these will dry faster this first coat than it would otherwise dry. Uh, once this is good and dry, uh, all the little edges where the leftover paint from long ago didn't scrape off. They'll become kind of brittle from just having been painted and I can sand it and get it a little bit smoother, right? So once this is dry, I sand it and hit it with another coat and see what feels. It might need a third coat. At least two coats is always good. Third coat might not hurt. It really depends on how much time I've got before it rains next time but once you, you know once you're at this stage it's easy to add coats of paint you don't have to go too crazy with it so uh, I'll stop the video now and catch up with you at the next stage when this is nice and dry and we can have a look at have a look at it after it's dried up and uh, take it from there all right so we'll see you in a little bit all right so it's a couple days later and these paddles are finished and uh, I did do some more coats of paint and film it, but uh, there was something wrong with the way I went about the filming, so all that footage is lost. <laughs> Long story short, uh, once it's dried, I gave the whole thing a light sanding, gave it another coat, and then once it dried from that, I gave it another light sanding and another coat. I mean, I can't even tell which paddle, which paddle's which, right? But they both look, they both look pretty good, right? There's one, here's the other, right? So I mean, again, I didn't bring this back to the point where it looks like a new paddle, but that was never the goal in the first place. And I would say, unless that's unless that really floats your boat and that's your thing, I don't think it's uh, worth the time. You saw how quickly it took to just, you know, basically cut back the tip of the, the, the very end of the paddle to get to the good wood and to scrape it and sand it down so that I could give it a couple more coats of varnish. So we're ready to go now. <laughs> These are ready to get back in the water. I, now I just got to finish the, the work on the canoe. I've already done some work on the outside of the canoe uh, with fiberglass. I got to do the inside then it's going to be painted and each of those uh, applications requires a hike back in the woods. Today looks like a pretty nice day. Maybe I'll get back there to do that. But and I hope you found that interesting. Just restoring a paddle. Not a lot of work, doesn't have to be an overwhelming exercise, doesn't take a lot of gear. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.